So mom gets real weird when dad leaves, and that's when the fucking shit starts. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I was like, what? But is she dating also? Do you, Not does the she time. bring men in like he's no. bringing women in? Okay. Negative. No, so my mom was really just spiraling over a divorce. And then we move into the apartment complex that Brody Stevens actually lived in. It's really? single mothers. We didn't know each other. He's a little bit older. He was older than me. And it was mostly single mothers and immigrants. And um, and that's, yeah, I start to notice that I don't really like my mom. I'm about five, six years old. I don't like her. I don't feel good around Isn't her. Isn't it funny how early you feel it? <laughs> I was the same yeah. way. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. Hmm. You did too. Yeah. You never felt that she was maternal. Like I never, I never wanted to, I wanted to touch her hair. She wouldn't let me because it was like a helmet of hairspray, you know, mm -hmm. don't fucking touch my hair. <laughs> <laughs> and her nails were always like blood red and long and yeah. spiky. And she would put lemon juice in her hair. It was already bleached, bleached, bleached blonde and then lemon juice. And then she would tease it. So it was extra, you know. Like, would that make it lighter? Or lighter and then crispy. She liked her hair crispy. crispy. And she would tease it. And then she had a flaming red bush. My mother was a natural redhead. And she would, you know, I was seeing her naked. She was always naked, getting ready in front of the mirror, putting her makeup on. For but is that also ugh. like, I hear you on the uchs. But yeah. Are we just as Americans just so fucking rigid and prude? Because I hear a lot of like South America and they're like, yeah. people walk around naked all the time in the house. Like It is a European thing, definitely. But then, you know, but we're in America now, Jack. And like, you need to have a fucking awareness. I have a three-year-old son now, and now I'm kind of like. Oh. You don't fucking stand naked in, <laughs> with your bush out in front of your kids, tease your hair. You don't do that? Where's that lemon? Give me that lemon. I'll put it on my bush hair and tease it up. Don't touch my bush. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, it's the worst. And she had a douche bag. You know, you ever hear Lenny Bruce talking about his the mother's hot water douche bottle. bag? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my and grandmom like, had one. Oh. It was a. Uh, it looked like this though, like oh, a rubber bag with a cord yeah, on it. Yeah. yeah, it would hang in her in her hallway closet. It smelled like mothballs. Yeah. <laughs> what was with the heavy douche bags back in the eighties? Like women's pussies were just this vile. Is your pussy dehydrated? Yeah. I mean, this thing's a good fucking two liter right here, Grandma. Wait, like, why did she have to blast her pussy every God, week? That's a lot of water <laughs> blasting. Yeah, yeah, like what's going on in there? And she would always tell me like. Men don't like women with stinky pussy. That's you, how she would say, she would say it. Just, uh, stinky pussy. You're five years old. Yeah, like I need to hear. Oh, yeah. It starts at five. I'm yeah. going to go watch one thing, two things. Yeah. <laughs> and then or thing said, one and thing two. God damn uh, it. That's what please. it was. And then she said, you, at night, you must let your vagina breathe. You so it's a vagina at night, but it's a pussy when no, men stinky, don't want to smell Stinky it. pussy is, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you have to let your vagina breathe. Vagina. You don't wear underwear to bed. You wear your pajama but no underwears like she like uh, uh, but then slowly like i said it got but do you take that now do you yeah take i don't lessons? sleep with panties are you no fucking underwear? kidding me no. you gotta let your vagina breathe bro i'll let my daughter know that <laughs> i'm gonna have that conversation <laughs> with my daughter she'll be at school telling people like i'm letting my vagina breathe at night hell yeah yeah my I, vagina your vagina my vagina i hate wearing underwear to bed i think it's terrible yeah um but like i said she got more and more paranoid and so later, much later, I found out when I was 34 years old that my mother was diagnosed. Well, she was undiagnosed. She had borderline personality disorder. And later, it's, it descended into uh, schizophrenia. She was very paranoid and psychotic and crazy. How did, what made her finally go get checked out? No, she never did. Boo -boo. Oh, so how do you They know never that? do. That's the problem with borderline. Most, most of the time, and I'm going to get a bunch of fucking emails from all the borderlines out there. They don't get treatment because they don't think they're doing anything to anyone else. So I what see. happens is, uh, okay, so you asked about custody. Uh, the court automatically gave women custody basically in the 80s. So I live with my mother five days a week and then on the weekends with my dad. So I'm getting shuttled back and forth between one fucking lunatic to the other, right? It's crazy mom's house. Yeah. And then she'd get mad at me. You have too many socks in your drawers. Go live with your father. And she'd kick me out, and then I'd go live with For my dad. For too many socks. Bullshit like that. But what was really happening is that my dad was partying and having a good time and not being a responsible parent, and she was resentful of it. And so she would justify kicking me out to, like, punish my dad with the, you know what I'm saying? Like, make mm -hmm. him take care of me kind of thing. So she, they were using me as, like, a, a pawn or whatever, which is super healthy, right? Like, don't Great, you do that yeah. with oh, your... Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> 
I threaten her and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to abandon your children yeah. constantly. Emotionally, Emotionally physically, yeah, mentally, yeah. Yeah, all that. It's yeah, great. Just let them go. It's cool. And then I would like get kicked out by my mom and I'd live with my dad, which was no structure. I was Pippi Longstocking. There was no routine. I would eat Cupid's hot dogs for dinner and Carl's Jr. And, you know, no brushing my teeth at night. There was no homework being done. And I'd call her and apologize like, mom, I'm sorry, whatever I did. And she wouldn't answer my calls. Because you wanted to go back? Well, that's the fucked up part about right, that. Right, yeah. You don't know that your parent, the child will automatically make themselves the wrong one because God forbid your parent is bad. You can't even conceive of right, it. Right, they're your hero. Yeah, and you need them to survive. Yeah. So you're surviving. So that went on forever until I was 13 and then she remarries to an Indian guy who's a uh, sociopathic criminal and then... Um... <laughs> How do you... I mean, what do He's you mean? He's dead, thank God. Uh, what? What do you mean? I mean, so she wanted to get remarried when I was 13 and she put an ad in the Indian newspaper. -uh. She loved Indian men. Yeah. Where's the Indian newspaper? I don't know if it exists anymore. It was here in the Valley, had in an Indian San newspaper. San Fernando Valley. She put an ad. She said, buxom European. Buxom. Blonde woman. With fresh pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the freshest pussy in the Valley. <laughs> I mean, if you don't mind the smell of curry, you're going to love my pussy. <laughs> A paprika curry <laughs> pussy. <laughs> Get your life, bitch. This bitch was crazy. Uh, so she put a fucking ad. Okay, buck wow. some European blonde woman seeks <clears throat> well off Indian man for marriage. Well hung or off? Didn't even fucking matter, dude. Mm -hmm. She just wanted money because okay. we were living in that apartment complex. Bitch was ready to get out. The whole time you've been there in uh -huh. one place. Okay. She's ready to get the fuck out. She's ready to move on up like the Jeffersons, get her right. Mercedes, get her rock. So, and all the while she's watching your dad live a playboy life. That's lifestyle. right. And he's off the club med. He's taking me to bars at night. When I'm living with him, I'm going to bars. I'm dancing with sailors on what? school nights and shit. How, how old are you? Like 10? Dancing to fucking white lines. <laughs> Vision, dreams of passion. Whatever the fuck that shit is. I'm like, dang, 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 dang. <laughs> dancing with sailors. Sailors, bro. <laughs> sailors. Like, I'm fucking third grade, bro. And I'm dressed like Madonna for school because he used to take me to the swap meet, my dad. And that's how I get all my school clothes. Mm -hmm. The fucking swap meet, bro. So it was like tube skirts. I wear like one dangly earring and like fake nails lipstick like this to third grade homie and then i go to the nightclub with my dad because he was like why do i get a babysitter just come to the bar with me yeah he's frugal he's frugal as yeah. fuck yeah. homie <laughs> and uh i mean i'm dancing and i'm dancing to shit that i don't even understand like frankie remember that song relax don't yeah. do it when you want to come yeah. da -da 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 -da. when now you like... want to come you're like what what give me another shot of tough <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> extra cherries come <laughs> it's like about yeah. gay guys <laughs> butt fucking and coming and come <laughs> spraying <laughs> fucking ropes of cum fucking sailors are yes! all dancing with you and shit please that's oh, just the iceberg God. and then he takes me to club med which is a french club it used to started as a french swingers club okay that's what i want to ask because that's yeah. what i've always heard it's a swingers it place. used to be it's now it's anymore. a family resort mm -hmm. but back in the day homie that's another one like here i am dancing and fucking you know taking sips or whatever but but the craziest part is going to school the next morning after going to the nightclub and having to keep it a secret because I know in my little third grade mind, if I tell like, hey, I was out at the fucking bar last night, I know that I'm going to get taken away or some. it's going to stop. The fun is going to stop. It's just fear fear, 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 fear all the time. Absolutely. And anxiety and never feeling In between safe. the moments that you're actually having fun. Yeah. Correct. Which is Correct. this much. Which yes. is, right, right. Because yeah. your parents are, obviously, you're supposed to feel safe and right. loved. And they must know what they're doing. They must. Surely. I talk about that all the time. Like there's a Me shift too. at some age where you just you you finally look at some adult, whoever it is, and you're just like, oh, you're a fucking idiot. Yeah. I'm 10 and I'm smarter than <laughs> I, you. Because yeah. up until that moment, whatever age it is, it hits you. You just think every adult knows everything That's about right. everything. Yes. Like I'm asking you a question. How come you can't answer that? That's right. Oh, you know, and then you start realizing like, oh, my dad's friend's a fucking idiot. They're all douchebag. Yeah, They're right. all scum mm -hmm. Look, Looking back, they were all fucking criminals and scum fucks. Anyway, I tell my fucking three-year-old that. I go, you don't have to listen to everybody. You, you I, follow I, what's inside of here. That's right. Because the outside world, bro. Anyway, 
he's going to get the education from his mom. Um, that's my, my daughter's getting the street one right now. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. I tell I tell him shit all the time. Don't fucking listen to the outside world. Go I tell her, this. you defend yourself. I can't. Yes. The teachers, I said, let me tell you something. I don't care what those teachers tell you. If anybody puts their hands on oh. you, I say, you know what? You karate kick me and do all that <laughs> shit. You do it to those kids. Absolutely. But I'll get in trouble. I go, no, you won't. I'll come there. She's like, you'll hit them. I'm like, I can't hit the kids. But if I could hit those little motherfuckers, <laughs> I'd take my shot. <laughs> right. Believe. But you can. You can put them in a sleeper hold. You can do whatever yeah. the fuck yeah. you want. But don't e- I said, you don't ever hit first, but you hit last. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what bothers me about this no bullying pussy nonsense they're teaching kids now. <laughs> no, no, no. Some kid fucks with you. You fuck him right you back, bro. Teach that kid a fucking lesson. That's right. Yeah. You think the... Anyway. We're, okay. I have I already have our boxing gloves. Good for you. I got my mitts. We do one, two combos I and everything. I love it. Yeah. Two we're in there old. working. And she knows her. how to punch properly. She's <laughs> never put it in her... Fuck, I know. She I know, kn- homie. Uh-uh. That's Break wrong. Break those thumbs. <laughs> she knows how to fight. <laughs> Okay, so where am I? Okay, dad's and I. Anyway, she marries the, the stepdad who's a fucking criminal. And that's when stuff gets real fun. Uh, this guy is great, though. I actually really loved my stepdad. He was paternal. He and I got along really well. Did he have children? He has three daughters from his first marriage. So we'll find out later is that he was using my mother for her credit. This is the third or fourth woman he had done this to, where he would marry these women, take their credit, take their money, build up an illegal empire he filed bankruptcy three times prior and so we became we became millionaires and it was awesome i was like we got money bro and she had a benz and she took her fucking benz to the spa and showed her friends like drive by your dad like fuck you man yeah yeah and for a while it was really fun until you know his windshield got shot out on the freeway or our lawn got got set on what? fire. What? Shit like that. Shot out his fuck. Yeah, his windshield. That's a. I mean, you have to be. Takes you have to follow. You got to know where somebody is. Right. You got to follow him. You got to get up next to him. You got to have lot. that. That's a lot of prep going into lot. shooting somebody's windshield out. It's a lot, bro. Strategic. Yeah, strategic. And then he would uh, just shit like that. Like we go for ice cream, he and I, and then he'd stop on the way. And I like, wouldn't go anywhere with him. Oh no, he was great. He was really, really I'd sweet. be scared I was gonna be <laughs> in a hail of bullets. <laughs> no, no, he would, so he would go, let's get pistachio ice cream. He was a big fat Indian guy. And I'm like, cool dude, let's go down to the pharmacy, like Rite Aid, right? Mm-hmm. Or what the fucking shit was called, thrifties back yeah, then. Yeah, thrifty. Well, hold on. And he'd pop out of the car and then he'd shiv a guy's tires in the parking lot and then get back in. Like, you see had, that? Hell yeah, dude. And some guy fucked him over. And he that he's got some business dealing, and that's how it was in that in that house. I was like, this is crazy. Mm-hmm.